Hello everyone and what a joy it is to join with you even though online to bring our worship to God in this very special time. Let's bow our heads now as we ponder these wonderful words from Hebrews 12.1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Join me now as we pray to Almighty God. Eternal, all-powerful God, we bow our heads to you in acknowledgement of your power, of your authority, of your position and station. And as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, we think of what a wonderful God you are and how richly you deserve this worship that we are bringing to you now. We confess, Father, that we are not always in this attitude of prayer and worship and adoration towards you. <clears throat> we often think of ourselves as how we can handle everything <clears throat> and how the ways of the world and the things of the world will bring us the joy and the happiness that only you can bring us. And with that attitude, Almighty God, we become entangled in the sin that wraps us up and hinders us and blocks us and causes obstacles in our lives. And in this quiet moment, we confess this to you. We are truly remorseful and repentant we ask that you forgive us as we are really apologizing to you for offending you with the wrong attitudes. We thank you that we have a Savior. We thank you that you loved us so much that you gave us your only Son. That whoever so believes in him will never perish. And as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, we think of Jesus. We are so grateful, Almighty God, that you provided the way back to you. Nothing that we can do could ever give us a smooth path back to you. But Jesus does. And through Jesus, we come to you where we are reconciled, forgiven, and we have your grace and your love pouring out again because of Jesus in our lives. We think of others at this moment and we think of those whom we love, those whom we know well, those whom we hardly know. And we think of the situations that many of them are facing. And we ask you, Father, that your mighty hand reaches into those situations brings reconciliation, brings peace and quiet, brings a happiness again that we can only know through being close to you. We don't know really what these people are struggling with, but we do ask, Father God, that you deal with it, you attend to it, and then later on you give us the opportunity to come back to these people and remind them that it was you that intervened. It was you that dealt with the situation. It was you that gave them a solution. And we thank you that we will get that opportunity. In the name of our Savior Jesus, who when the disciples came to him and asked him, Lord, teach us to pray, he answered, pray like this, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. After the Second World War had ended and the world began to settle down to normality, the population of the world grew into billions. And while it was doing that, a very peculiar phenomenon developed. And today, it's even greater than ever. Because after the Second World War and the destruction that was caused, the world began an industrialization process. And that industrialization developed into mass manufacturing and it developed into huge um, operations and factories making the goods that the world desired. What happened then was urbanization and millions of people pouring into the cities where the great factories were and seeking work in these great factories and mass production institutions. And as that happened, people began to experience a feeling they'd never had before. And that was the feeling of alienation, the feeling of isolation, the feeling of just being part of a mob, just being part of a mass, just being part a face in the crowd, a clock card, a number, and the individuality and the uniqueness of the human began to fall into this mass of people. The feelings of a cog in the wheel or just no real identity or being known in this world and it continues today. In the early to mid 1960s, the hippie movement began. And we, yes, I was part of that. And we rebelled against this mob mass mentality. And we, we withdrew into a world of peace and love and real acknowledgement of each other as real people and not just part of the mass used in mass manufacturing and, may I say it, war. I must declare that I never tried cabbage of knowledge or any invention that was man-made, such as Dr. Timothy Leary's invention, but I did enjoy the uniqueness that the hippie movement gave to each and every one of us. The question is, has much changed today? But you see, if we study the Word of God, we find a very and dramatic different situation. We understand that God formed each and every one of us with a purpose. And in his world-renowned book, Rick Warren writes, The purpose of your life is far greater than your own personal fulfillment. If you want to know why you were placed on this planet, you must begin with God. You were born by his purpose and for his purpose, writes Rick Warren in his book, A Purpose Driven Life. But now let's go to God's word, where there are some very powerful statements made to Jeremiah, but all of them are equally applicable to us today. Let's read Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you. And so it goes on. Let's spend some time really understanding these amazing statements. God says before. Now this is so absolutely fascinating, but perhaps for another time. And God says, before I formed you in the womb, we need to identify this I. This is the great I am, who is so great and powerful that Jewish people dare not even say his name. But in the ancient language, we find the word ego, the nominative case of the first personal pronoun, 
and entirely emphatic. It is the utterance of the Lord concerning himself. And therefore, it is God himself stating that it is he who forms us in the womb. In ancient Hebrew, we find the word form as yasar, which translates into that which is molded or shaped into a form to produce or be created. It is God alone who creates us in the womb, and no one is ever an accident. And of course, this is a strong argument against abortion, but perhaps another time. But the next phrase is one of the most powerful. God said that before he formed us in the womb, I knew you. God states that even before he forms us in the womb, he knows us. What a concept. In the ancient Hebrew, we find the word nekar, which means to be acquainted with. And it is a complete intellectual awareness, or if you like, to have complete knowledge of. It is cognitive, and the knower has an involvement with the known. In Romans 9.16, it is written like this. It does not therefore depend on man's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. You see, it is always God who forms and God who determines our purpose. Rick Warren writes in his book, But there is a God who made you for a reason, and your life has profound meaning. The only accurate way to understand ourselves, writes Rick Warren, is by what God is and by what he does for us. How incredible is it that Almighty God knows you personally, intimately, completely, and he knew you before you were born. Do we live our lives with that thought uppermost in our minds? Well, then we find the next phrase, before you were born, I set you apart. Now, we know this was said to Jeremiah, who is to become a great prophet of Israel. But I am of the strong view that it applies to us as well. We, as faithful believers in Jesus, our Lord and Savior, are set apart and are not swallowed up in the nameless, faceless masses. We have a very special setting apart. Genesis 1.20 writes it like this. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him male and female he created them. What an enormous statement. And perhaps we'll get into that some other time. But for today, it is for this reason that we have Christmas. Why? Well... If we go into John 3.16, that great quote, we'll see the two connecting, Jeremiah and John 3.16. For God so loved the world. Why did he love the world? Because he knows us. He knows each and every one of us. And he loves each and every one of us. And he loves the entire world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And this is why we have Christmas. You see, we are all so unique, so precious to God. And on top of all of this, he knows us completely and does not want us to remain lost and doomed to an eternity of suffering away from him in a place called, um, oh, what shall we call it? Oh, I know. Let's call it hell. Because God knew us before we were born. He sets us aside. He knows us completely in this life, every aspect of us and who we are. And therefore, through Jesus in this wonderful season that we celebrate so beautifully, he provides the way back to him. Even though we wandered off, we rejected him, we denied him, we claimed he isn't real, he still knows us and does not want us to be lost forever. But we will be 
if we do not believe. Look at what John 3.36 says. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. We have the way, we know it, but the choice is yours. If you do place your complete faith in Jesus, you are set aside. <clears throat> in Hebrew, which occurs more than 80 times in the Old Testament, we find the word sit. It is a verb of expressing movement from one place to another, to put in the right place. So if you place your faith in Jesus, you move and you are put in the right place. And when we are there, we know exactly what Jesus meant when he said in John 11:40, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And we were formed for that because God knows us so well. We were set aside for that. Yes, God knows us and wants to give us all of his glory in heaven. If you know this and believe. Amen. Let's close with these lovely words from Romans 3.22. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Amen.